country's unbroken circle. We've all heard it said, who's going to fill their shoes? Who will fill the shoes of the country greats like Hank Williams, Loretta, Dolly, and others? Who comes next to dig even deeper into the country music roots planted by folks like Charlie Pride, Bill Anderson, Grandpa Jones, and more? That's what this series is all about. We've asked the country's family reunion artists to invite those who they feel will walk into the next generation, the singers, the writers, those who understand that at the core of country is the same message, faith, family, real life, real stories. And we think you'll agree that country's future is in good hands. Will the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by? Welcome to Country's Unbroken Circle. Country's Unbroken Circle is what we're calling it this time around. Country's Family Reunion, talking about the past of our business, the present, the future, our unbroken circle. Now, this is the past and the present with Rhonda Vincent, the future with Emmy Sunshine, you guys are doing a duet together, and you say you have sung together before? We, we have, yeah. We, uh, we, we love to get to sing together. Yes, absolutely. Emmy has a, a on her YouTube channel, we did this once, be, only once before. So. Yeah, we, uh, I have a YouTube channel called Americana Corner where I interview um, all types of different Americana singers and anybody that I want to. It's really, it's really a lot of fun. Well, that's great. I meant to ask you earlier, do you have any records out? Have you made some records? Uh, we made a few CDs. Um, I think I did my first when I was around seven years old, actually, um, and I kind of went from there. I got about four or five now. Yeah. Have you given, I mean, is it making records and, and being on the radio and, and the mainstream music? Is that what you want to do? or? Well, you know, I'm just kind of, I don't know yet, really. <laughs> I'm getting there, you know. I, I mean, we, our music is... Uh, really kind of different from a lot. I mean, we, we really, a lot of people tell us that, are you country, are you Americana? And I get that a lot, so they don't really know where to put us is the problem. So we're just trying to figure that You'll out. Make but that's the place. great thing. She's created her own sound. She has a, her, yes. her songs are very unique, and, and her sound is her own, and I think that's wonderful. I told her a while ago that, you know, the singing career and all can be temporary, but those songs that she's writing, that first song she sang about... Uh, basically what you were just saying there, uh, those kinds of songs will live forever. So keep writing and, and keep I singing. Will. And thank you for being here today. I can't wait to hear you all together. All right. Here the long sweeper will He slams to blue to fly
country's unbroken circle. Yeah, that's terrific. That's terrific. Emmy, do you uh, do you have a band that when you go out and do shows, do you have a band you go with or just? Absolutely. Um, I have been uh, performing and uh, traveling with my band ever since I was around nine years old. Um, I started a band when I was around five. It was all my family. <laughs> it was all my family. Um, my dad, my brother, my uncle, my cousin Doug, who travels with us now. I mean, it's, it's all a family thing for us. And it's really just, it's always been an adventure. I think that's where there's a kindred spirit. She travels with her mom and dad, and, and much in the same way that I did. And th she's performed at my family's festival uh, in Queen City, Missouri. It's over the 4th of July, and so Emmy has been up there and performed. So her family, my family, and, and it's just a wonder. I'm just so proud of her and a wonderful kindred spirit. Thank you for bringing her. Yes, <laughs> my pleasure. Yeah. Yes. I'm glad that's I got to great that y'all are, you know, singing some together and yes. everything. That's just terrific. And Emmy, I wish you the best of luck. And uh, don't worry about what category they put you in. You just make a category. Yeah. Okay. And you'll fit in. Just make it the Emmy Sunshine category. There you I'm go. I'm okay with that. Yeah, Linda. I kind of had a question because we talked to Leroy about his style and his sound, and I noticed you're missing a couple of strings on your guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, is there a story? Is there a different name for that um, one? Yeah, this is a tenor guitar. Um, I started playing ukulele when I was around seven years old because my fingers were not <laughs> really big enough to play um, a guitar or anything like that. So um, after a while, I needed to learn how to play guitar. So this was going to be my transition over to guitar, but I ended up loving the tenor so much that I just kind of started sticking with that a little bit more. So Ooh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's I never really heard nice. of a tenor guitar. <laughs> I'm so ignorant. Something about that tenor, buddy. Something about that tenor. Yeah, that. right. Yeah. The guitar, you mean? <laughs> She's not only an incredible <laughs> singer, but also a great musician. <laughs> well, that will help in your songwriting, too. The more you, I can agree. you know about the instrument, the more that, that it'll help. Uh, Y'all sitting here, everybody's, everybody's sitting there thinking what they were doing when they were 14. That's what I was going to say. At seven, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I, I was covered knee deep in, in dirt and had my finger up my nose. <laughs> I wasn't playing a tenor guitar. I was when finding you were 14? Buzzing. You no, are no. Johnny Lee's daughter, aren't you? <laughs> last year, last year. No, just kidding. Uh, Neil, where were you when you were 14? Man, I was dead, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> There's just two people come back, me and another guy. <laughs> That's a joke. I was, I don't know, four, I was in, what, ninth grade? Singing in choir and playing a little... A little football, poorly. Uh, was everybody here doing something musically or headed toward music when you were 14? At 14, yeah. I yes. think so. Yeah, yes. I, yeah. I think we all were. Yeah. Not as a, not as I a, was gonna, not as yeah. a career or anything. I had no idea. I was gonna that's say at seven. That's when I was knee deep. Not, not at 14. <laughs> 14, I was, yeah, I was doing musical theater and studying that. Yeah, but you know, like when we was kids. We only had so much to learn from, you know. Right. Like her being 14 now, and, and there's so much, the, you know, the spectrum has changed so much. Good and bad to learn, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Accessibility. Well, it's hard to remember back that far. <laughs> Who said this? <laughs> you know, you're really right about that, about the influences and all, because we had AM radio, and you couldn't hear half the instruments that were on the record anyway. And we didn't have the, the great influences that, that the kids have got today with all different types of music. I had eight tracks, just like uh, Miss... Uh, <laughs> Do what? I had eight tracks, because my dad had all the country eight tracks in his 1968 Dodge Polara. And uh, I inherited that fishing car from him when I got 16, so. I got all I got all the country records in the world from my so eight tracks to my dad's car. Is that what you were learning from? Yeah, uh. Eddie Arnold and Merle Haggard and Buck Owens and all that stuff. It was awesome. Yeah. I was learning so. from drunk people in a bar. <laughs> At fourteen. <laughs> At fourteen. Wow. It was teaching me a, a lot of things. Yeah, I bet. But country songs. Did you songs. stay away from a lot of those things? No. He just <laughs> That's how he got all his tattoos. Yeah. Well, I didn't come from a family that that played. Like we we just sang mostly. Like on Sundays, we would gather at my grandmother's and just sing, you know, a cappella after dinner. Like we would just sing songs and, uh, yeah. I mean, so that's 
I didn't grow up playing, so that's why I married performer. this one. <laughs> do you play an instrument? Yeah, I was a child performer. Yeah, do you play an instrument? I, I play guitar a little bit. Since we've been married, he, he taught me to do that, and I chop mandolin, but I don't, I don't chord it or anything, so I'm, I'm more like a snare drum. So I'm no Rondo, but... <laughs> I'm sure we were all attracted to country music for different reasons. Some of you were attracted to it because of the instruments, the music itself. Some of you, like me, were attracted to it through the, the lyrics. First thing that I remember loving about country music was the story songs. They always just kind of took me and pulled me in. Yep. Some of them were sad, a lot of them were sad, but they were, they were things that, that great writers like Hank Williams and some of the greatest songs of stories were the ones Hank Williams did as Luke the Drifter. I don't know if yep. you've ever been into some of that kind of music or not, but that always appealed to me. And I guess I've continued as a writer trying to tell stories in songs, paint pictures with words. I've got a new album out. And I would uh, like to go into that and do a song that uh, paints a pretty vivid picture, I think. This, this is based on a true story. I knew this guy. It took place in a little town called Athens, Georgia, which uh, Laney's not wanting me to mention because that's the home of the Georgia Bulldogs and not the Alabama Crimson Tide. <laughs> Came really close, didn't they? <laughs> Come go with me back a few years and I'll share a story with you. This is called The Only Bible. I hope you like it. Norman never went to church I often heard him say I'd rather see a sermon Than to hear one any day Show me a man who lives his faith by his actions and his deeds That's the only Bible I'll ever have to read Norman was a guy I met When I went off to school I said, come go to church with me He said, hypocrites and fools they dress up in their coats and ties, walk righteous through the door. They were drunk and chasing women the whole night before. Don't talk the talk if you can't walk the walk the way you should. Show me a man who understands and has a heart that's good, who rights a wrong, forgives a debt, and turns the other cheek Cause that's the only Bible I'll ever have to read One Sunday morning as the preacher rose to speak Old Norman waltzed right in the door In his tennis shoes and jeans He hadn't shaved or combed his hair Smelled of beer and cigarettes He walked right down, sat on the floor And proudly crossed his legs The congregation held its breath Nobody said a word when from the back the clickety-clack of a walking cane was heard the Old Deacon Jones was coming down the aisle There was bound to be a fight But he just smiled and dropped his cane And sat down at Norman's side said you won't recall a thing I've said today but you've just seen a sermon that says more than I could ever say so let this be a lesson 
as to how we sow our seeds. You may be the only body somebody ever reads. You may be the only Bible. Somebody ever reads Bless your hearts, thank you. Thank you very much. True story. His name was Norman. Wow. Linda Davis, you beautify our set every time you come to the Aww. show. Make it even prettier when you sing. I love that. That has been that saying. You may be somebody's a church that they go to or their, you know, the Bible they read. I've never heard it quite like that, but that is so right. We have to be mindful of that when we live our lives. You, I heard my fun. mama say that a lot when I was growing up, that, that general idea. Thank you. That's something my, um, my mom says all the time. You know, it's be the example for the person who might not have that in their lives. And I hear that a lot. So hearing that song was really, yeah. gave me goosebumps. Thank you. Coming from somebody your age, I doubly appreciate that. Thank you. Tell your mom I love her. <laughs> All right. That's terrific. You know, I want to say, too, Bill, everybody talks about the respect they have for all of us who came before. I just want to say how much respect I have for all the new people coming in. Yeah. And I see the, the reverence for the music, for the stories, for life, for faith. I have so much respect for the new people coming in. I applaud you. I do too. So very yes. much. And that's the, you know, because obviously we're not going to be here forever. So many of our generation have already gone. Over 40 different artists who've sat in this circle are no longer with us. And it's got to be carried on. The music has got to be carried on. The circle has got to stay unbroken. Absolutely, and so many people talk about the new people coming into the Opry, and I like seeing that, and I tell them, I, the worst thing I could ever imagine is the Grand Old Opry going down in my lifetime. I mean, there'll come a time when I can't be there, but I sure want to sit back and listen like I did before I got here. So we certainly, I welcome all of the new and ones to come she really in. does. I, I was speaking from somebody who came into the Opry. My first performance there was in 1989. And you and Jan Howard and Connie and all of you, Gene Shepard, everybody was so welcoming. And every time that I would come back to the Opry, I always felt like they don't, they're not putting this on. You guys no. meant, you well, wanted us to come there and be there. <laughs> So, How can you not be a fan of your well, boys, my word? It's a, you know, it's a, it's a mutual thing, and I feel the same way. It's like, you know, um, there's, just because I'm uh, an elder statesman now, <laughs> it doesn't mean that I have any kind of, um, uh, you know, I want to hear new artists. I, they still inspire me. Yeah. They still, um, you know, fire me up and make me think I'm being lazy or whatever, right. you know, so... It's uh, it's encouraging, and and you were so encouraging to to me, and I'm sure I think all as long as we girls. inspire each other, that's I, what I, it's all about. I think that's about. very healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, Neil McCoy is one of the greatest on stage performers, and he makes all of us want to be better. Yeah. Off stage, and, oh, and to yeah. and <laughs> listen to Leroy play pretty that rough. guitar and all. I mean, that that is you get oh, inspired. Yeah. You really do. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard four or five good song titles here today. Have you? Mm. <laughs> I wouldn't say. <laughs> oh, what are you going to say, Glenda? Well, it's just like a big old share fest. It's a love fest, but it's a share fest because everybody's different. There's no need to feel competitive. And that's, I think, when people first come to Nashville, maybe from our little hometowns, we feel like, oh, we got to get up there and, and, you know, 
get, make our way and hoard our little stuff, but it's like there's no need to do that when you get here and you realize, no, everybody's your, well, your everybody's, cheerleader. Well, everybody pulls for each other. It is, you know, and I don't know if folks back home realize it. I think maybe the viewers of this show might get that from watching this happen, but a lot of folks, maybe the fans, they don't realize you know, everybody wants to be successful and, and do well, but you don't have to, you know, move anybody else out of the way to do it. It's when it's your time and your turn, God's going to make it all happen the way it's supposed to. That's right. Yeah. You hear that, Neil? What's that? What she just said. Uh, yeah. Hey, I was thinking to brag on, not Johnny, certainly, but on Linda. <laughs> <laughs> Although you did tear me up with that song. Yes. This is the sweetest girl. Yes. We played at, we were at the Texas Country Music Hall of Fame together a couple of weeks ago. And Linda said, country's family reunion's coming up. Are you doing it again? I've, I've been fortunate to be here a couple of times. I said, no, I, didn't. I guess my email shut down. I didn't get the invite. And she said, well, I'm, I'm coming and you can invite a friend. Would you come and be my friend? I said, yes, I'd and, love to. And he made it work. He was in Colorado last night, Minnesota, tomorrow night. So yes. just making this work, I appreciate you but, but doing that. I, I love being here, but to come here as a, a, a friend of hers is a big deal because she's known around where we all grew where we grew up. I, I was in Jacksonville and I live in Longview and she's from Carthage. Everybody loves Linda Davis, no matter, and no one, you know, they're gonna talk bad, dang near about anybody if you give them just half a chance, mm -hmm. but you can't ever find anything bad to say about <laughs> no, Linda. She's always absolutely. positive and, and squared away and everything's righteous and, and, and yeah. you, it, it, I mean, it's almost like you don't wanna believe it. But, but I'm hoping she sucks when she gets up because everybody else has been good. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm probably going to follow her. Everybody in East Texas is proud of you, too. I mean, oh, Neil McCoy sweet. is the king down there. And of course, everywhere. <laughs> king alone. But, but everybody loves you because you have such a big heart. You have a charity event that yeah. you do every year. Tell us about it. I want to hear oh, about no. it. Oh, no. Come on. You don't need to. Yes, let's hear about it. <laughs> He Bless does. I want to hear about it. I got to sing on it one Come time. On. You I want did. you to tell us about it because there's other people who want to it, be it's on it. It's a foundation my wife and I started in Longview, Texas, where we live. Been there. We've been married almost 38 years. And we, but our well, son was up, fixing to be born. And we, you know, in, in this business, and I know I'm speaking to the room here because a lot of us get invited and we go do shows. You get a booking, you go do a show. You go, and when you're there, you find out sometimes, a lot of times, that it's a benefit. You know, so you'll have people coming up, oh, it's so kind of you to come down here. It's so sweet of you. And, and somebody was, you know, I had that, as we started to have a few hits, and then finally somebody, I was in Arizona, Tombstone, Arizona, I'll never forget it. And somebody came up and said, that is sure nice of you to come down here and, don't, and, and not donate, but spend your time with us. And I said, look, I don't have any idea. I'm here for a paying gig. Please tell me what I'm doing here. Please tell me what we're doing. They said, it's, it's a benefit for a, a young man with bone marrow cancer. And I said, Oh my gosh, I said, where is he? Where is his family? I, I, I was feeling guilty because I'm just going down there and taking money, which we all, you know, it's working gigs. So, so I made a conscious effort to say, if I, if I know I'm going to do benefit, I want to find out what it's benefit. And I want, to, I want to meet the people. I want to see the ball field or the plans or whatever it is you're going for, just so you can kind of get a purpose when you're doing a show. Instead of just getting up and going through your motions and singing a song, entertaining people and leaving. So I met a young, a young boy uh, named uh, Matt Barney. He was nine years old, and I just fell in love with him and his family, and enough so much that when I went back home to, uh, to Longview, my wife was pregnant with our son, and we talked about it. And I said, you know, there's, there, we're so fortunate that we can, we can uh, provide for a family. You know, we've, we've, we've struggled through the hard times, but we're now we're having some hits and, and getting some stuff done. So what, you know, what can we do? And, and we talked about it, and we came over to the East Texas Angle Network to help Children in our home area, our East Texas area, Northeast Texas, with life-threatening, life-challenging illnesses to help them with expenses. And, 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 and Matt, the little boy that I met that day, he ended up, we became great friends. He was in a, uh, I had a big song called Wink, and him and his sister came out and were in the video of it, and he died just shortly after that. And it just, it got to, when we started getting our minds together, you know, we just thought, how can we help people? It's about time we start thinking of other folks other than just ourselves. You know, and, and I think that's, I think as, as you start to become more successful, you kind of have a purpose. You figure out really what life's about. You know, I, my mother used to make us kids go to church all the time, and I won't bore you to death, but, and, and I never, you know, when you're young, you just don't quite understand what you're doing. My, my older brother and older sister, they were sharper than me, and they understood, but I didn't. So, but as you, as you get married, and then you, you start to have kids, life takes shape, and then you get older, and then you have grandkids, and then it's just like, yeah, I, 
I'm glad I learned a long time ago what I was supposed to be doing and why I'm really here. Uh, but, but so we started the foundation and we've helped, golly, over 500 families. We've raised about $9 million just in our, wow. in our area. And, and, and Linda came, but, but, but people, people like Blake Shelton have come and Martina and Wayne Newton, a lot of people will come. And if any of y'all want to come for free, boy, I'd love to talk to you. <laughs> but it's, and no kidding, but, but it's, been, it's been a great thing. And, and Linda, yeah, she, just, she just toots our horn wherever she goes. And I just can't thank you enough. Thank you for it. Let me be your friend. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Okay, Linda, third time's the charm. What are you going to sing? <laughs> oh, are we here to sing? Okay. Yeah, come Can we sing. get up there? Really? Can I get a sleep of water? <laughs> Y'all, this has just been so fun. Everybody. Charlie McCoy, oh my goodness. Oh. I mean, okay. I love the way you've sat over there today and you've just kind of curled up on your little couch, put your legs up under you. I feel so <laughs> privileged. I mean, it's like my house concert that I get to come to all, and I make new friends. I'm so proud of you. So when you see that, you think, well, nobody's really that sweet. They can't, but she is. That's weird. It's uh, weird. <laughs> <laughs> Cute and sweet, isn't she? She is too sweet. There's something yeah. wrong or something. Uh -huh. She's probably going to be on Dateline with the ex murder or something. <laughs> You're going to find out that she... I, I'd murder myself because I can't hold one right. So this song is called 20 Years Ago, and my friend and many of your friend, Kenny Rogers, recorded this first. And, um, gosh, Wood Newton, Michael Spriggs, Mike Noble, and Dan Tyler wrote it. And it's been probably, gosh, 30 years ago maybe when that was released. And I used to sing it when I played at the piano bar. Where yet, Susie? I was across town, played at the piano bar, and I would sing it because I thought it's so pretty and the melody and... And yet, it didn't resonate because I was so young. But I thought a pretty song. Well, fast forward, and it is resonating big now because I've caught up to the lyrics of this song. And, you know, it was, we were inducted 2009 together, Neil, at the Texas Country Music Hall of Fame down in Carthage. And this is one of the songs that I sang that night because it just, you know, takes us back home. And some of y'all might can... Go back in your minds, too, because there is something special about home. If you leave, I think you can go back. 20 years ago, Dirk, I'm excited to... It's been a long time since I walked through this old town Oh, how the memories start to flow There's the old movie house They finally closed it down You could find me there every Friday 20 years ago I worked the counter at the drugstore down the street Bet nobody's left there On Saturday mornings, that's where all my friends would meet. You'd be surprised what a dime would buy 20 years ago. so much easier 20 years ago I 
guess I should stop by Mr. Johnson's hardware store Cause his only son was my friend John But he joined the army back in 1964 How would we know he could never come back 20 years ago? Oh, my memories from those days come was so much easier 20 years ago. Well, it almost seems like yesterday, 20 years ago. Beautiful. Don't have to be. Don't ever be sorry for letting your letting your feelings show. Well, this right here, she is the future, and 20 years already seems like ancient to you. <laughs> but it goes by really, really fast. But you always have this memory, and you're going to be making a whole lot more memories. Yeah. So. You know, if you're the mama of somebody who's made it, of course, for anybody that doesn't know. Yeah. <laughs> Lady Annabellum. You're the Hillary, yes. your daughter. And Raleigh yeah. Jean. So I'm, and they're going to just think, why did you go there and cry today? <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, it's just what music makes you do, it makes you feel. Well, Wonderful. and it's all a part of what we're talking about today, the unbroken circle. And you're a big part of Thank you for sharing that. And again, don't ever be ashamed of letting your feelings show. That just yeah. happens sometimes. <laughs> you're precious. Thank you. That was 50 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Linda That's Davis. Okay, we're still standing, right? Yeah. Thank y'all. Oh, you didn't know you had a cry, baby. I know. Hey, hey, Bill, I figured out I'm not coming back as a lead singer. I'm coming back as a steel guitar player. Are you kidding me? He's killing these girls. Oh, my God. That's, I didn't know that. I didn't know. That's a pretty kept secret, that whole steel guitar player craze. I, they, I'm say, they claim they're the smart ones. That's what I heard them say that. Uh, you're up. you got to follow that, pal. Man, you know what? I usually come here and do a dang... Uh, up tempo thing because it just fits me better. But I thought, well, shoot, I'll do a ballad. And now everybody else done ballads. God dog. <laughs> hey, uh, Linda and I actually, we met probably 82, 83. I was, I'd got started with Charlie Pride, uh, and he, they couldn't figure out what to do with me. They tried to. I went out and opened shows with Charlie. Couldn't figure out. They said, well, maybe, maybe a duet would work. So Linda came in. There was a group called Atlanta. I don't know if anybody remembered Atlanta. Yeah. But they were. Uh, obviously out of Georgia, and they were, they were, uh, God, I think the thing's wrong. There was too many of them. There's about 10 or 12 of them. They always wore tuxedos and stuff. But they came in the studio, in Charlie's studio, and Linda and I showed up there. I'd never met her, and we ended up singing a duet together. And I don't, I don't have a recording of it, but it's been like 35 years ago. Yes. We sang together. We were actually a duet for about, how long was the song? Three minutes? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> But we're still together. We, yeah, that's right. You can't we see each other about me. once every three or four years or something. But <laughs> yeah, it's great singer. She's, she's really a good girl. It's nice to... And this has been such a, such a, uh, a hoot for me. I love coming here and hearing all the stories. And, and, and really, I do... <laughs> she's much sweeter than I am. I really pull for some of y'all to get up here and suck <laughs> because it just makes it make me feel better. <laughs> I mean, it's the truth. You know, everybody says, oh, no, we're pulling for you. I ain't pulling for you. It's 
especially when I had a record on the charts, I wasn't pulling for you at all. I was hoping, I was hoping mine to jump you or something, but we didn't jump many people, but we worked our way up, but, but this is a great rhythm. Johnny, Johnny can relate to that. Johnny hates a lot of people too, so. <laughs> He rung you right into that, John. No, I, I love being here. It, uh, I love being here. So anytime that, that y'all do one of these, I'd love to be invited. And I just like being here and being a fly on the wall and actually seeing where we are, where we are, where we're going. Uh, he gave you your past and present, he said. Did you hear that? Yeah. I know. I thought, you know, good. you can't tell her that. <laughs> Well, I meant it as a compliment. Okay. She, she's been doing it for a while. Yeah, you're right. That's, That's what right. I meant. That was a compliment. I'd have put it a different way, but I like it. Past and present and the future. Past and present and future. Oh. How would you put it, Neil? God. How would you put it? Sing huh? a song, Neil. I just look at that good looking girl that is singing so okay. good. I told her a while ago the, the great thing I like listening to her sing, she hits all the notes right in the middle of the yes. note. You know, some of us. We, we, we kind of, we get there, we end up on it, but, but you know, sometimes you may start sharp or flat, but you're pretty quick to, to correct it, but she just, she just hits them right dead, like, God dang, that's good stuff, boy. I'm going to sing a song, uh, I had a bunch of up-tempo stuff that, that worked good for me and kind of works better for my show, just my whole attitude, but it's a song I had out, and it was a top ten record, it's called If I Was a Drinking Man, and, and I never had a problem with alcohol, uh, but a lot of people in this business and in life do have. And I used to sing it uh, when it was doing well on the charts and, and people would come up to me after show and say, man, I, I've, I've listened to that song a lot. It's really helped me through some tough times and I'm, I've stopped drinking. And, and so that's what I'm gonna sing. And, and I know everybody, not everybody, but some people look at that. I bought, I bought that skin tone Band-Aid. <laughs> Whose skin does that match? It don't match mine. <laughs> I bought it though, I thought, well, it'll blend in, they'll never see it. And I just, Kah! And I've been telling people it's cut, there's really a wart on the end of my finger. I ain't lying. I burn it off of, I burn it off of right there and right there and then right there. And well, there's a little one there that's coming back. But I can't, I'd join them big old seed warts. I mean, Joker got a root on it, but it's been there probably 15 years, too. I, you know, you, and I just keep putting compound W on it. And... Yeah, here's if I was a drinking man. Sorry about that. This is a good record. Yeah. If I was a drinking man Like I used to be I'd get myself a bottle And you'd be history But you made me a thinking man When you walked out If I was a drinking man I wouldn't need you now Learn to live without you one day at a time, even though you're always on my mind. There's a bar around the corner if I wanted to forget, but I ain't giving up on our love. If I was a drinking man Like I used to be I'd get myself a bottle And you'd be history But you made me a thinking man When you walked out If I was a drinking man I wouldn't need you now Knowing me like you do, the kind of fool I've been. You probably think I'm three sheets to the wind. I wish that I could tell you I'm feeling no pain. But oh, you should see how much I've changed. If I was a drinking man 
like I used to be. I'd get myself a bottle and you be history. But you may be a thinking man when you walked out. If I was a drinking man, I wouldn't need you now. If I was a drinking man, I wouldn't need you now. Thank you. Thank you. Neil McCoy, the real McCoy. Great job, Neil. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. How about another duet? We've had <laughs> Rhonda and Emmy. I think Ray Benson and Susie Boggess yeah. ought to team up mm, and, and kick it up. do one. <laughs> sure you can. You can get up. <laughs> Susie, you were talking about coming to the Opry. You do <laughs> such a great job when you come to the Opry. You oh, got, you got two musicians. You have an upright bass. Right. And a guitar, acoustical guitar player, right? Right. That plays with you. Right. And, you know, you can you go out there sometimes and you follow, you know, somebody that's had a big, loud band and yeah. rock it. But you go out there and you get the attention. I mean, they respect you so much just when you walk out there and open your mouth and, and you, you quieten them down and they listen to everything you say and do. Well, some I mean sometimes, sometimes I love to play with the Opry band, too. I mean, because they're so amazing. Um, but it's, you know, it's the, these are the dudes that I'm out there with on the road. And, um, it, you know, you get kind of locked into your what your rhythms are and things. And uh, so it depends on what tune we're going to do. But I, I do like just bringing Craig Smith and Elio Giordano has been playing with me. So uh, I got a great little group. So, um, let's go over. I'll be over here. Follow me. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's a little bit taller than me. <laughs> All right. I can say this. Wow. I better not say that. One, two. Are we, are we recording this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do a song written yeah. by Freddie Powers. Hello, Fred, Freddie I don't Powers. Think so. That's all good. Oh, Freddie, we miss him. He's a. Some of y'all knew Freddie. No, no, we're in G. Oh, I'm in G. G. Is that going to sing? Oh, G. Oh, G. We're in G. He tried to tell me it was in F sharp. G. I don't have a capo. I don't use a capo. You know what they. You know what. You know what a capo on the dashboard means? Handicap parking. <laughs> <laughs> you don't play guitar, Neil. What the hell are you doing? That's about? a good joke, though. <laughs> I understood it. Okay, I have my joke. Okay, I get, I get to tell my joke, too, right? It's pretty short. So, did you ever buy a cured ham and wonder what it had? Oh. <laughs> okay, oh. Okay, all right. All right, all right. All right. All right. Oh, sleep for crying. He didn't get the joke. All right, whatever. I get a lot of jokes from my mom's uh, place where she lives. So, uh, you know, she, she gives me the jokes that were at dinner that night. So, so I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I'm from Illinois. We like ham. We like it. <laughs> I've told my dad's jokes, and I've gotten kicked off praise and worship team. So, <laughs> one time. Are we supposed to do a song? Yes. Freddie Powers, bless his heart, wrote this with Merle. Maybe people love to play with fire 
And the other games they play are just as bad I'd rather stay at home and feel your burning lips And play the games that make me feel so glad I think, I think I, I, that's what you know, that was why Chet wanted to sing with her. He wanted to sing with her. <laughs> I I didn't sing that song till about two years ago. I did I did a whole album of Merle songs. Yeah, it was did. a lot of fun. Cause I love Merle songs and Merle. Seely says she can just picture the image of you chasing Ray Benson around the room. <laughs> Well, you know what I say, I'm nuts over her. You know. <laughs> uh, thank you. Whatever that means. <laughs> I'm sure Country's that's Unbroken edited. Circle has kind of been the theme of our get together this time. And I think maybe as we come to, come to the end of the trail for this edition, maybe we ought to go back to a, a couple of the folks that are, that are here for the first time, that are a part of the future of country music. Joshua Headley, how about another song from you, buddy? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. If we're in the future, <laughs> where's my flying car? They're only going to throw you off. They're not throwing me off. <laughs> All right. Uh, I like to, live, I like to intro this song by saying uh, I wrote this song about when two people are trying to have a thing 
and everybody wants to talk about the thing, and then the thing becomes a thing, <laughs> if that makes sense. It will. <laughs> Give me three. Minutes. Well, it's all over town that we're together. We did our best to hide our love away. Will they say loose lips sink ships? And if that's true, then this is it. Might as well let Mother Nature have her way. So let them talk. Let them wonder. Let them speculate about the spell we're under For it's just between the two of us What we do behind closed doors So let them talk Let them wonder Travels fast here in a small town It seems like we're the gossip of the day Will they say we're quite the pair With our secret love affair But we don't care what other people have to say So let them talk Let them wonder let them speculate about the spell we're under For it's just between the two of us What we do behind closed doors So let them talk Let them wonder Oh, let them talk Let them wonder Thank you, Great job. See what I mean? <laughs> Great job. Are you making records? Because I know the people that are watching this will want to know where they can find them. I got one. <laughs> it's called Mr. Jukebox it's on Third Man Records. And you can get it, uh, you know, on the internet. That's right. It's, Jim, a, it's, Jim a, whole it's a whole CD, about. right? It's a whole CD. Yeah. Man, or I've been... Vinyl. I've been hearing your stuff and really enjoying it, Josh. You sound, you. sound great, man. Yeah. Thank you. I just, you know, I'm just the guy that likes country music. That's what I love. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yes, we need more like you. Yes. Yeah, hey, can do. I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, you wrote City Lights. Were you, were you 17? 19. 19? That is such a raw, emotional, adult song. How does somebody write that song at 19 years old? I don't know. <laughs> it's incredible. I'm, thank you. Well, Lights the, that lure are nothing but a masquerade for tears. And the better question is, <laughs> he wrote it in Commerce, Georgia, on the roof of the radio station, right? No, Something the roof like of the Hotel Andrew Jackson. And the thing, the thing of it is, in Commerce, the tallest building's like two stories tall. <laughs> and there are no city lights. <laughs> <laughs> one. Yeah, there was one. Well, my daddy told me uh, he should have known then that I had an imagination Heck to be yeah, a songwriter. You, yeah, so you had it. I don't know. Thank you for saying that. I, I take that as a compliment. Thank you. Good luck to you, buddy. Bill? Yeah, Jim. You know, isn't it incredible that everybody here has a different sound? It's all country music, and, and everybody's so great, but it, everybody is so unique with their own styles here today, you know? And it's really, and you're talking about inspiring, that's really inspiring. And I wanna say, and I know that, that y'all have new albums out, and, um, I, and I hope that some of y'all that have had big albums that are gonna come out with more stuff. Johnny, you got something out? Yeah, next, and, next you, week. And I wanna, and if anybody ever says, to you guys that are almost gonna, you know, making your next record, if they go, you need to, I think you'd better change a little with the times. 
I would say to each of y'all, let the times change to you guys, because yeah. y'all have, yep. you know, laid down something great that can't be taken away. You, you made your mark, and keep making it. And and one one final thing is that um, uh, T. Graham Brown and I are gonna are starting a petition uh, to give to Gene Watson, and that is Gene. Watson, grow your long sideburns back that inspired <laughs> us, that inspired us to have long sideburns. Well, yeah. At least I know I stood for something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's so funny. Most people nowadays couldn't, couldn't see me that way, but, but <laughs> I've watched a lot of things come and go, Bill. I've been in this business quite a while. And of course, I've had the guys I looked up to and everything. It, and there's not that many of them left. And it makes me feel so good, you know, to meet someone like Josh coming along doing what I was doing, what I set out to do, and what I've always done. And, and the people out there really appreciate that. They love it. People say, well, you can't hear no country music. Well, you can if you try. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I had a guy come up to me the other day, and I've told this on shows before that I've played, said, well, said Watson said, uh, since we've lost George Jones, and since we've lost Merle Haggard, and since we've lost Ray Price, said, looks like you're number one. Yes. And that's good, except I didn't know whether he meant I was the next one to go. <laughs> <laughs> or whether up until then I was number four. <laughs> but I'm just happy to be a part of it, no matter how it works. <laughs> He's silent until the end of the day, and then he lays something like that on us. That's great, Chief. All right. How about, uh, how about the, the husband and wife yeah. over there from North Carolina, Darren and Brooke Aldrich, who uh, sang so beautifully a while ago? Jeannie, didn't you used to have a, a clothes where you guys shared the, some female artists shared clothes? I want to get in a... Close sharing with Brooke. I love yeah, that dress. I was Did thinking, you used to have that? Yeah, well, there was, I, I think sometimes it was out of necessity. <laughs> Dottie West and I swapped clothes quite often. Jan Howard, some too, really? yeah. I think we should, or, let's well, organize that again. I, yeah, and I, yeah. I, Ron, I've been eyeing that on the mannequin. Is that I not know, beautiful? that's Gallon, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, Jan and I swap clothes a lot, too. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell that. I, was, I really wasn't going to This dress there. made me think of June Carter Cash when I saw it in yeah. the store. I was like, it kind of looks like something she would have worn. So. I wish I was Jim Lauderdale's size. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then I'd yes. get to wear his stuff. <laughs> I could wear your dress, but it would just be on this one leg. <laughs> <laughs> you could do it. <laughs> going on what Gene said, we're honored to be here today. Brooke and I, we thank you so much for inviting us, and we hope we get to come back. And Coming up in the last couple of years, we've just been very blessed to uh, be around good people like y'all. And y'all welcome us at the Opry, and Jimmy take us out. And uh, we've been out with a lot of good folks, like John Cowan. Mm -hmm. The Oaks have been so nice to us, and Rhonda has. She, when we first started, she come and supported us a whole lot, and still does. And we thank y'all folks, and we hope that we do it justice, don't we, Brooke? Absolutely. Yeah, it's just a, an honor. So <laughs> if I this talk is, too much, I'll cry. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, con a song that was written by uh, Shane Nichols and Casey Chambers from Australia. And I was teaching music back in North Carolina about 10 years ago, right when we was starting to put an album together. Mm -hmm. And this song come on, and it really just grabbed a hold of me and touched me so much. And uh, it was actually written about Emmy Lou and Graham Parsons. And uh, me and Brooke was just getting into the duets. We love a lot of the folks in the duet scene, and from Porter to Dolly to Vince and Patty, Joy and Roy, this list goes on and on. And so this is the sweetest waste of time. It's what Brooke says I am. I always say it's better than a waste of time, so. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't see Sweet. 
And all the band back here and everybody. This edition, don't go away. Come here, stay here, both of you. This edition of uh, Country's Family Reunion has been very, very special. And we thank everybody for being here. And uh, our friend Larry Black, who uh, none of us would be here if it weren't for him and his vision for this kind of music and this kind of show. And I think it's just terrific that you're helping us carry it on in. One of these days, uh, you'll probably be hosting the show and you'll do a good job and, and uh, you'll get to be Janie Seeley's part. <laughs> I'd be honored. <laughs> but it's been a fun day, and congratulations to, uh, to all of our newcomers, and much good luck to, uh, to everybody. And I know our, our fans and our friends that watch it have enjoyed it. So till we see you next time, Country's Unbroken Circle rocks on, and let's sing a little bit of our theme song. We're going to have a family reunion, everybody.